Thank you for listening to this Podcast One Sportsnet production. Available on Apple Podcasts and Podcast One. Napa know-how. Right now at Napa, grab a five-quart jug of Mobile One full synthetic motor oil for just $28.99. It keeps out harmful sludge to help reduce wear on your engine, which is important if you like cars that, you know, run smoothly. So keep your engine healthy with Mobile One, now just $28.99. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. General States pricing. Sales prices do not include applicable state local taxes or recycling fees. Offer ends 531.19. Counting the seconds down in St. Louis. Because after 52 years, the St. Louis Blues have won the Stanley Cup. Dr. Hockey. Welcome to the final Dr. Hockey podcast of the 2019 season. Wrapping up the Stanley Cup Finals tonight, I'm on with Dr. Jason Berkeley. Jason, what do you think of the Game 7 Blues win over Boston? Um, well, I guess it kind of proves the fact that we, we can't predict anything. Although we were, we were pretty noncommittal, I think, if I remember correctly. We were somewhat noncommittal, and I did say, and I qualified it by saying, if Rask comes out and plays the way he did in Game 6, the Bruins would win. This game in this series was over in the first period. Absolutely. They, had, they uh, were deflated after that, those two goals. The, the Blues had three goals on five shots in the first period. <laughs> okay. And uh, it, it, just didn't, it just didn't stop at that point. I mean, the Blues were relentless. And, again, special teams didn't really play a, 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 play a role. There was only one power play. That was for the, Blue, for the Bruins. Blues had 20 shots on goal. Bruins had 33 shots on goal. Not their norm. But the key to this game that I think was a huge part of it was the fact that the Blues had 21 blocked shots, not by the goalie, but by their players, taking shots. The Bruins only had seven. So you have to think about how much extra work that that placed on Rask that his team didn't really kind of weren't didn't have his back as much. No, definitely. And uh, Bennington made some unbelievable saves, and the one that stands out the most for me was the one that he had on um, Nordstrom in the third period. Huge. Where it was – now, and the thing is, if you, if you watch Bennington play, especially in the Stanley Cup Finals, one of the, quote, weaknesses, if you will, about his game – is that if you shoot the puck low, I'm not talking about mid-range. If you shoot low at his skates or force him to go down, he'll give up a big rebound. Yep. That's one of the things about his game. If you watch, if you watch how the bad rebounds he's given up where they've actually been able to capitalize and score goals off of him have typically come from, sh- from shots that have been very low and big juicy rebounds that have gone off the other way where he's not being able to come back and compensate. A couple of those things that happened, if you watch that save against Nordstrom in the third period, it was almost a carbon copy, but he was able to get back over to the right and actually did the same thing in the first period where he had a very similar save where it was just unbelievable. So, Correct. And, you know, you saw Bennington, like, he was lighting it up. He just kept kept robbing them and robbing them and robbing the Bruins. And, you know, quite honestly, I, I... I think that the <laughs> the Bruins had to just be blown away that they yeah. didn't score five goals in the second and third period. I mean, and seriously, they were they yeah. were all over him, and he just kept stopping him and stopping him. It was and incredible. again, it has to do with these block shots by the Blues players getting down, sacrificing their bodies, and you, if you come away with 21 block shots, it makes your goalie's game that much easier because they're not the, the other team that's threatening in the in your zone isn't able to get shots through to put the goalie on notice correct so it's it's when you have that kind of flow going it's just a shame that the blues didn't win it in in, in at home for their fans but i will tell you this if you're a bruins fan or if any bruins fans listening to us at this point but if you're a bruins fan and you may have flown in for the game i feel your pain I know the feeling. I know what you're going through right now. I know what, even if you didn't fly in for the game, if you went to the game, I know the pain you're going through right now because I went through the same thing. 
The expectations was to win, to win a game at home, you bet. a game seven, to win the cup. You can do it in front of your home home fans and everything else. And when those expectations are not met, it hurts more so than if your team wasn't that good and you get beat and because by a better team. So they're probably pretty upset tonight in Trotton. Well, <laughs> but the thing is also not for nothing. The Bruins didn't play their best game. No, the the, the Blues came out to, to to play at the drop of the first puck. The Bruins didn't, and that's just the bottom line. It's interesting. I mean, those Blues seem a lot more comfortable on the. They were so relaxed. Did you see even the, go back and reverse uh, re, uh, rewind it, and because uh, I recorded the game. But go ahead and look back, even at the singing of the national anthem. Yeah. The Bruins players, the, the starting players are up there. They looked angry, like they were like, you know, just... And the Blues players just looked kind of just in a zone, relaxed, and that was exactly what they needed to do to get that edge. Yeah, they, they definitely had to come out with, you know, some purpose, and they did. And I, I'll tell you, I, I was very impressed with uh, Vladimir Tarasenko tonight. He looked excellent. Yeah. Yeah, he he did a lot of amazing things, and especially on that uh, that Shen goal, you know, he he teed that up for him. It was for it sure was awesome. I mean, he just he he saw what was happening. He goes down, grabs, looks over his shoulder, grabs the puck, dishes it back. You know, it, it was right in that right in Shen's wheelhouse. Boom! You know, third goal locks it up. I mean, the the fourth goal is just gravy. But I mean, I I, I got to say this uh, this Blues team they really they came with a purpose and you know it, it was awesome to watch. I was very another, impressed. Another stat also, again the physical toll, the Blues out hit them thirty six to twenty eight. So again, they're really making they 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 made the, the the Bruins work overtime spinning their wheels in the mud. And I, I, you know, listen. It was the the Con Smythe was up for grabs because if Rask had another game like he did in Game Six, he would have won the Con Smythe. Ryan O'Reilly, congratulations, another goal. Okay, yep, in the game, amazing. A, 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 an assist, two points. Uh, finishes the final Game Seven with a plus two. Uh, that's what you want from your big guys, and he just is one of those guys that just was uh, a player of destiny on a team of destiny this year. And you know, good for him because well, you know, he, what, didn't he get traded this year to the Blues? Yeah, I mean, he, was, he came he from wasn't, the, he was from the Sabers at uh, what was it in October or he, November or something? Yeah, he wasn't quote that guy per se, right? But he became that guy on a team that became that team. Well, and so yeah. you know, it's it's one of those situations. And again, I'm also happy for Bowmeister. He wasn't in the echelon of players that you wanted to win a cup, kind of like a an OV whatever else, but. He was one of those guys, 16 years in the league, was in Calgary for a long time, wasn't really going anywhere, just probably didn't see this ever happening to him. Probably didn't see this happening to him the first three months of the season, as, as many of the players did on the team. And it just clicked. And it had to do and started in goal with Bennington. And, I mean, my, my God, if Berube doesn't win the Jack Adams Award, I, I, I don't know what it takes. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, he, he should. I mean, well, you know, guess what? We'll be there to find out we who does with that. I yes. mean, that's, <laughs> we are, we are going to be like, be there and with bells on. I, I'm yeah. very excited about that. Yep, yep. But anyway, he should, he should win, in my opinion, hands down. Uh, um, you know, and you're looking at, at, at this team that it's a really a storybook ending. And by the way, and, and kudos to that guy that won the hundred grand off of his uh, thousand dollar ticket or whatever it was. Amazing. Or five hundred dollar ticket, whatever it was he bet. But you know, Alex Steen, you know, again another player who's been around a while. He's been with the, I think he's been with the Blues the whole his whole career. Yeah, um, I think so I don't know. You know, and a guy like yeah, a guy like him, uh, Tarasenko, where everybody was doubting him. They wanted to potentially trade him. There was like this, you know, oh he's, he's this, he's that. And listen, you know, uh, I wonder what uh, you know right now what uh, uh, Paul Stasny's doing. Yeah, well, you know, Paul's, you know. He, <sighs> I I think you know Paul is probably going to hang probably out happy. on the. He's probably going to. You know, I'm sure he's happy for the Blues. And but I bet Bacchus he's going to be happy for his boys. You know, Backus was a long time Blues. He was a captain. I know. And, you know, and uh, this was. I, I, listen, uh, this is uh, one of those situations where it's a team of destiny. Well, it really I, was. I think it's good for the NHL. I mean, it, it's definitely awesome that St. Louis gets their first cup. You know, yep. it's 52 years that franchise has been <laughs> trying to chisel its way in, and now it's in. 
And, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting. I mean, it's very cool. It's cool for St. Louis. There's, it's a great city. There's definitely a, uh, there's going to be a funk over that uh, Boston Bruins house at this point because, you know, they did sort of stack the cards. They made those key trades and got, uh, got coil. Um, yep. You know, they, they did some things towards the end of the season to really tee up for the Stanley Cup, and it paid dividends. I mean, they got there, but, you know, you're down to the last game. And I, I think the only the only consolation for the Boston Bruins is that the Blues beat them tonight. They didn't lose that game. You know, they, they were beaten badly. They came to play, but they just their their plan didn't work. They couldn't get the wheels going, and and they're, they are definitely disappointed, I am sure. But the the better team won tonight, that's for sure. Do you think this is it for Chara? I, I think so. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know why he would want to do another year. I mean, uh, I I think that you know this injury. The team's close. The team's very close. I mean, it's not like they have uh, they're going to blow this team up anytime soon. No, th- definitely not. I mean, they're going to bring back all those. You know, they've got they've got serious firepower coming back next year. In fact, they'll probably they have some they have some options. I think to move some high quality people for some different high quality people. So you know, we'll see what uh, what they do. But I mean, Charles, he's uh, <laughs> that that face fracture. I'm sure is a wake up call for him. Well, we'll see what he decides. But wishing the best either way. But um, yeah, Ryan O'Reilly, you know, there you go figure. I thought Bozak was actually injured. I thought he was possibly not going to play. Is what I had thought I'd heard. But um, he did all right, man. He was out yeah, there. He was slugging yeah. it out. I liked uh, yeah. when they were picking up the cup and the mic was on and uh, Doc said. Uh, that uh, the uh, we had to turn off the mic on yeah. the cup to, <laughs> because of the uh, the, words. the jubilant language that the players are yes. using. I was he like, always, he always has the perfect way to phrase it <laughs> without saying it, kind of like a Seinfeld. He's you awesome. Know, Seinfeld always had a good way of getting a point across. You know what they're talking about, but not coming out and saying it. Doc does that with so effortlessly oh, he's <laughs> with the man. his terminology. It's great and. Uh, uh, I always love when he talks about players are going, you know, getting to the corners, and then after when the whistle blows, and he goes, they're exchanging pleasantries. You know, it's just <laughs> he's just and a crowd that. gathers, yes, and they're <laughs> exchanging pleasantries. <laughs> it's clearly not happening, but uh, you know what, uh, you know, he oh. puts it in his own way, and it's great. But anyway, yeah. Um, well, there we go. End of the 2019 season, and uh, we're looking forward to them announcing the schedule for next year. Uh, we have the draft coming up. We have the NHL awards coming up that you and I will be at next week. Yeah, no, we're, uh, we're going to be there, and we'll be getting interviews. Now, I think uh, Shahab is coming, so we're going to get him to do the live uh, Instagram, and uh, then we'll. I, I'm getting a camera guy, a sound guy. We're going to have mics, the whole deal. Um, the doctor. I'm going to hit the doctor hockey store uh, pretty hard to get some uh, some T-shirts for everybody, so we can give some out and. I, it's gonna be a blast, man. I'm totally pumped to be there. I mean, this most is the NHL award. Yeah, it's great. I, I also, well, most importantly, I probably will not be wearing a tie. Well, you you have to wear a tie. You have to wear something. You got to look. You oh, look I have good. a suit. This is a red. No, no, I, I have a suit, but it, I just don't know if I can do a tie. Well, I'm gonna do a tie. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look good on that red carpet, man. That's the way this goes. Um, I probably am gonna wear. I have some new uh, some new blazers that I got. Um, so I'm pretty pumped about that. I will tell you that the off season for the Doctor Hockey podcast is going to be very active. Uh, we're going to have lots of time to look over what's happening. By the way, it'll blow by so quickly. I mean, I'm I'm ready for October, so it's good. The you know the thing that's happening next year that's making it different than every other year is that Seattle is adding a team at the end of the year, so there will be yes. an expansion draft. Yes. That will taint the the uh, way that people move players at the trade deadline in a big way. And, you know, who they protect and who they don't protect, I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to be very cool. I thought it was really cool you just said the word taint. I <laughs> I was thinking about that for a minute. And you, you then, you know, I, was like, I didn't know where that anatomic term would show up, but there it was. Boom. It's always a good day when you can work the word taint into a conversation. Well, I think, you know, yes. because the truth is, is that it will taint the trades at the end of the year. And I... You know, I don't. I don't think that it's going to be a. Uh, it's it's not going to be fun for some teams. I can tell you, some big name players are going to be lost in that expansion draft, and there is going to be some some angry general managers at that expansion draft one year from now. Because next year, that expansion draft I think takes place one week after the Stanley Cup. 